But in week two of our message series, Expect More, Believe for the Impossible. I believe that we can expect more than where we are right now in life. We're in week two, choose, choose faith. Expectancy is a powerful thing. Expecting, expecting God to move, expecting great things, expecting God to perform his word, to keep his word. For us as Christians, this expectancy is born out of faith. It's born out of God's character. It's born out of trusting that God is who he says that he is, and that he will do what he says that he will do. And when we believe that God is who he is and will do what he will do, what he said he will do, it causes faith to arise in us and causes us to live in expectancy of greater things and God performing his word in our life. And you see, we, but the thing is, we can't believe and we can't expect what we don't believe or not aware of. Expectancy, like I said, is birthed out of belief. It's an attitude of faith and trust in the, in the character and the integrity of God. We need to walk by faith. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. We, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The Bible says that the word of God is established in heaven. The Bible says that God has elevated his word higher than his very own name. That means he takes his own word very seriously and he's faithful to perform it. I believe that many Christians, though, are living out of, they're, they're living out of the expectancy, though, in the wrong expectancy, maybe. And I want to help us, though, to move forward and expect God to do great things in our lives. See God's word lived out in our lives. Sometimes we, we expect things that maybe that, that because of experiences in our lives or the current circumstance that we're in and our, and our expectancy is very limited because we're seeing the world around us and not grasping a hold of everything that God has for us. We look at the, the circumstance we're in, the hardship, the sickness, the, the pain that we're experiencing what we're experiencing, we're not, and maybe we're, we, we struggle sometimes to see things with the eyes of faith. And it's hard sometimes to grab a hold of God's promises and live a life of expectancy, knowing that God will perform his word. And it's important for us to know who we are, what God has promised, and walk out his word. We got to believe and know that we can expect God to do great things in our lives. We have to come to a place where we realize that God's word is true, that we are the head and not the tail, that we are blessed coming in, blessed going out, that we are the lender and not the borrower, and that God has blessed us and, and has promised us the abundant life. John 10.10, 10, I repeat it so often, that the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but Jesus says that I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. Amen. Every area of lack, every area of sickness, every area of struggle in your life is a result of, of, of sin, a result of the, the devil's hold and power here on the earth. But Jesus said that I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. The Bible also says that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil in your life. And he's promised to give you a life of victory. I didn't say it was going to be a, a life that was void of, 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 of difficulty, but it's a, it's a life of victory. The Bible says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. We're walking through because his rod and his staff, they comfort us. With Jesus by our side, there's nothing that we can face, nothing we will face that we cannot overcome because the Bible says that Jesus already overcame the world. The devil's already defeated. We often think that the devil and God are these two equal forces always fighting against each other. <laughs> and that's how... Culture might perceive it. That might be how we maybe think in our, our mind or whatever. But in fact, the Bible says that there's going to be a day, the devil's a created being that rebelled against God. There's going to be a day when the whole world looks at the devil and says, that, 
that was the one that caused all this havoc in the world? That was the one? Really? That puny little thing? We have to understand who we are in God and what God has done for us. Jesus Christ bore our sins, our pain, our shame, our sickness on the cross so that we might have that life and have it more abundantly. Now, I believe that God has a plan for your increase, your abundance, abundance in your job, your marriage, even in your influence and your effectiveness here on this earth. He wants to see increase in every area of your life. He wants to see us grow and grow and grow, move from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from faith to faith, and keep on increasing in every area of our life. I believe that that's his plan. The Bible says that the pathway of the righteous grows brighter and brighter and brighter into the noonday sun. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think, according to the power that works in us. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. And many times our limits are ourselves. Many times we, the, our limitations are based on maybe mentalities. Maybe it's not knowing what God really says in his word, but many times we create our own limitations by the way that we think. That's why the Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And what we're doing when we renew our mind is we're positioning ourselves to receive all that God has for us and walking in the blessing that God has for us. It's a continual process of renewing our mind and drawing closer to him, being conformed into the image of Christ. See, I believe that there's some choices that we have to make and some mindsets that we have to break in order to move into all that God has for us and to step into what God has for us. And today I want to talk to you about, Talk to you from the book of Luke. If you got your Bible, I'd like you open up to Luke chapter 7. We're going to talk about some, some about expectancy. And talk about faith and talk about some mindsets and how we can see God's miracle working power in our life, how we can see God move. Sometimes, you know, it's just a shift of perspective on life. It's, it, it, it's a perspective of seeing things not based on what we see, but with eyes of faith and the way that God sees things. Luke chapter 7, verses 11 through 17, it says, Now it happened the day after that he went into the city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him in a large crowd. And when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the city was with her, and when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came and touched the open coffin, and those who carried him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. So he he who was dead sat up and began to speak. And he presented him to his mother. And fear came upon, all, upon them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen up among us, and God has visited his people. And this report about him went throughout all of Judea and all the surrounding regions. We see in this scripture that things change when Jesus shows up. <laughs> I don't know how many of you have any dead situations in your life. Dead dreams, dead hopes. (laughs) Maybe there's a a relationship that just seems like it's too far gone. Maybe there's an opportunity that just seems like it, it flew right out of the window. And it seems like those dreams that God has put in you will never come to exist. They will come to pass anymore. 
Maybe it's a brother or a sister or a relative that you no longer talk to because there was just, just so much hurt in that, in that situation that it just seems hopeless and your, your heart breaks because you think that that relationship is dead. Maybe right now you're experiencing a, a, a financial, just a financial strain. It just seems like that mountain of debt is too high too much, and you don't know how you're ever going to get out. And it just seems like your your hopes and dreams of a of a of a a, ty- a, a a life of where you can where you can be generous and where you can where you can really just be a blessing to others. It seems like that dream has has died, and you're not able to to do what God has called you to do. We've all experienced things in our lives that seem dead. Amen. Amen. The good news is that without a death, there is no resurrection, and Jesus is in the resurrection business. And it doesn't matter what you have experienced and what you're facing right now. Jesus is bigger than any situation that you are facing. Like I said before earlier in the service, when Jesus shows up, miracles take place. And that's just not a warm, fuzzy thought or something that I say to be encouraging, but that's the reality. When Jesus shows up, we allow God into our situation, and we say, God, I can't do it on my own. I need you to intervene, and we position ourselves through faith and obedience. He's able to move in our life, and we're able to see him perform miracle after miracle after miracle, and we can see our lives change forever. You see, God does not respond to our need. He responds to our faith. Well, where's God in my situation? How come he's not helping me? God does not respond to our need. The Bible shows us he responds to our faith. He has a great compassion. It's great compassion. And there's times when he acts out in mercy on people, but he responds to our faith rather than our need. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. And those who come to him must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder. Say God is a rewarder. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So God does not respond to our need. He responds to our faith. And I want to talk to you today from Scripture about how to walk in faith and see those dead things in your life today, to see the miraculous happen in those dead situations or those areas that you're struggling in right now, those places that seem too far gone, Those promises that seem dormant. Those things that you feel like God has spoken into your life and you haven't seen them happen yet. That child that's far from God right now, that spouse who's not serving the Lord, that that financial mountain that you're facing, that dream that hasn't come to pass yet, that vision, that purpose, that destiny that you, you know, that, that you, that you got a glimpse of, but there, it just seems like that mountain and there's a wall in front of you and you need breakthrough in your life. I want to talk to you some things about faith. And I've been kind of reflecting on this. For the past year and a half or so, I've been preaching very strong on faith. So God, why, why, why this direction? That's... That's a gift of mine. I, have a, I, I operate in a gift of faith. But I believe that God is positioning our church. We are, the, our vision statement is we are a faith-filled, spirit-empowered community of believers. You've heard our mission statement. This is our, this is our vision statement. United community of believers accomplishing God's work together in our city, in our region, and in the world. To accomplish what God wants us to do in this world, to see our lives line up with God's destiny and purpose, it's going to take faith. We're going to have to believe God to do the miraculous, to believe God to do the impossible, and see him perform his word in our lives. God is not a man that he should lie. And I believe that God has brought me here today and brought me to New London to inspire faith, not Christianity. People get that mixed up. Faith, the currency of heaven. See, there's nothing that we, we don't don't receive anything from heaven except for by faith. Many people have a, have a, a, a mentality of, well, God sees my need. He knows where I am. And if he wants to do it, he'll do it. 
God responds to our faith rather than our need. And we've got to press in. We've got to take hold of God's word and all that he has for us because he's faithful and he's good and he loves you. And he's made a covenant with us with his blood and he's faithful to perform it. So first of all, first thing I want to talk about today is about, about, about walking in that. Is first of all, we've got to follow Jesus with expectancy. The title, the, message, the title of our message series this, these next few weeks is, is Expect More. Expectation, expect more. Sometimes we limit what we expect by our own experience. We limit ourselves because of what we're facing right now, today, or the past few years, or our situation, and that is our level of expectancy. But I want to call you out of small expectancy. I want to call you out of unbelief if you're experiencing that. I want to call you out of doubt. I want to call you out of small living. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think according to what? The power that works within us. The power of the Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit living in you, the possibilities are endless. But the world system, we we are taught to conform to their pattern, the way they tell us to do things. And we're limited on on our potential. And God wants us to break free from that. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. It says that you are a citizen of heaven. You are people of unlimited potential to make a difference in this world. And I believe that many Christians are living underneath, under the the full potential that God has for us. And God wants to raise us up so that we can have an impact in this world and truly be the church and truly be the, 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 the making a difference in this world. It says in verse 11, now it happened. Now it happened. What just happened? We got to look back in Scripture and see what happened. Luke 1 through 7, there's amazing things that happen in that Scripture. Luke 4 picks up on the ministry of Jesus. We, we, we see the, the ministry. He goes into the desert and he, he fasts for 40 days. He comes back down and, and, he, and he's baptized in water. The Holy, you know, Holy Spirit goes upon, comes upon him. He goes to the desert. He comes back down and he performs great miracles. People's lives are being changed. His ministry is in full manifestation. In Luke 6, the the Pharisees question him about the Sabbath and whether or not they should should work on the Sabbath and whether eating of the food is is, is breaking the Sabbath. And on that day, he he, he healed a a man who had a withered hand. He healed him that day, and they came against him, saying that he broke the Sabbath that day. And Jesus basically says, is it lawful for us to heal on the Sabbath? Lawful to do good or bad, or to save a life or to destroy. He also gave some astonishing teaching, some of the the best teaching they've ever heard. The people were in awe of the teaching of Jesus. They were just being loaded down with with great revelation, teaching like they had never experienced before. And after he taught, people were healed. He demonstrated the power of God, the the demons, the the demonized, the tormented, they were set free. Everywhere he went, the multitude wanted to touch him, and they, and, and they began to touch him, and, and, there, and it said that the power went out and healed them. There are many times it says, and, and, and he healed them all. We see in Scripture that, that there's not one person that came to Jesus, that came to him looking for a touch who he did not heal. Every person that came to him he touched their life. He touched their body. And their life, was, their life was changed forever. It doesn't matter what need you have today. It doesn't matter if you have, have sickness in your body or you're struggling in any area. 
every person that comes to him, he will move in your life. By faith. He's not moved by your need. He's moved by your faith. The woman with the issue of blood, she was, she was, she was struggling for, for 12 years with this issue. He knew about her probably. He, he, you know, he's Jesus. He knew. But it's the moment she exercised her faith and touched the hem of her garment, his garment, is when she was made well by faith. But after all these things, then there was this, this officer who, who had whose son needed healing. The servant came and Jesus said, well, well let's go. Let's go, to your, let's go to the house. Let's bring healing to, the, to this young boy. And the, and the man said, no, you don't have to go. Just say the word and, 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 the, and the boy will be healed. And Jesus said, no greater faith have I seen. I, I haven't seen faith like this anywhere else. And then because of his faith, the boy was healed. Now it happened that after the day after all this, now it happened after all this, the day after, that he went into the city and called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him in a large crowd. Nain's a small village that we don't hear much about in the Bible. It's kind of an obscure place, a small town. Not too many people went to it. There's really no reason to go there unless you live there. Sometimes we feel forgotten. It was kind of like a forgotten village, forgotten city in a way. And sometimes we feel forgotten in our situation, don't we? We feel forgotten where we are. But I want to tell you today, you are not forgotten. God sees you where you are. He sees your situation. He hears your prayers. He sees your faith. But he went to this village, and while he was going to this small village, this large crowd was following him. It seemed like a forgotten place, but this large crowd was following him. And this large crowd, in this process, after they'd just gotten from all this amazing stuff that Jesus done, they saw the miracles, they saw the great things that Jesus did. They were astonished by his teaching. They, 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 they saw that Jesus was the real deal. And that, 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 and they, there's a sense of genuine excitement and anticipation and expectancy in their hearts. And they always wondered, what is God going to do? And I could only imagine that in this crowd, there was such a buzz, people talking to one another. Did you see what Jesus did? did, you, did wasn't that awesome when he, when he healed that blind man? Wasn't it, wasn't it amazing when that person was healed and that crippled man was, was raised up and he was able to walk? Amazing things happened. And I could only imagine the buzz that was going on in that crowd. Like, man, I've been to church before, but I've never seen anything like this in church. <laughs> people being touched, people being saved, people being healed, people being baptized in the Holy Spirit, God doing amazing things in people's lives. They had a sense of anticipation of, well, I, I, if I just stick around a little bit longer, if I keep on pressing in, I know that God is going to do amazing things. They had a sense of expectancy, of anticipation. And I believe as believers, we need to be coming to, to, coming to, to church and gatherings like this and live our Christian life in that same sense of anticipation and expectancy of what God is going to do in our lives. God is who he says that he is. And he's moved by your faith. He's moved by your faith. But what happens so many times, we get so, so, so used to things and we unknowingly put on this religious front, like, well, I, I've seen that before. No big deal. <laughs> I've been around for a while. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Faith always has an expectancy that God is going to move at any moment, at any time. Faith is now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. 
Faith is now. I believe God's going to move now. I believe that when I show up to church today, I believe in my own prayer room at home, God is going to show up. I know that I'm going to have an encounter with him. He's going to move in my life. Right now, he hears my prayer as I, as I pray for my children. Right now, he hears my prayer when, I, when I'm praying about my finances. Right now, even though I don't see it happen in front of my eyes, I know that he's moving behind the scenes and my answer to the prayer is coming my way. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Faith is a guarantee. But we pray prayers like, well, Lord, if it's your will, Lord, you know, I need, this is what I need to do in my life, but if you don't do that, you can do something else. The word of God is God's will. Amen. If God said it, we can hold on to it and believe it. God is faithful to perform. But we have to have faith and expectancy that God is going to move today. We've got to have faith and expectancy that, that when I pray, something is going to happen. Every single time I pray for someone who is sick, I expect that something is going to happen. I believe God's word when he said, when you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. It doesn't say they might or maybe. It says that they will. Amen. When he said, when you anoint people with oil and, and pray the prayer of faith, that, 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 that they will, it will save, it will heal the sick. It says it will. It does not say maybe. When God said, I will supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory in Christ, his glory, glory in Christ Jesus, that it, it says that he will. He's going to do it. When the Bible says that he forgives us of all of our iniquity and heals us of all of our diseases, it means all, that he will. And he has. <laughs> because it says that by his stripes we were healed. If we were healed, we are healed. Our body's got to get in alignment <laughs> to God's word. It's faith. Abraham called things that were not as though they were. Yes. That's not mind science stuff. That's the Bible. Right. That's the Bible. He called things that were not by faith as though they were. Because his wife Sarah, she was very old. She was in her 90s, and, and God made a promise that they would have a baby. And that's impossible. But he said, well, God made a promise. God made a promise. It says that he didn't consider his body. He did not consider his own body. Like, my body's weak, it's old. But God says it's fruitful. And one day, he'll come into full manifestation. You see, God shows us in his scripture that we don't perceive things the way that it appears. In the natural, it looks one way, but the eyes of faith see it the way that God sees it, in faith, in completion. I may be experiencing sickness right now, but I see myself as healed because of God's word. I may be experiencing lack right now, but God says that he's opened up the windows of heaven and poured out such a blessing. I have provision by faith, by faith. Quit calling yourself sick and broke and poor. Quit repeating the doctor's diagnosis on your children and on yourself. I am well. My children are blessed. They are above and not beneath. They are the head and they are not the tail. Every believer should live a, a life of faith and expectancy where we think he might not be doing something, might not see it happening right now, but I know, I just know, just know something is going to happen. Verse 12, and when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried and the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a large crowd from the city was with her. 
I want you to see this and um, worth paying attention to. There's a large crowd following Jesus, full of faith and expectation. And they're about to collide with another group who is experiencing death and frustration. The mother's dreams had just collapsed. Her, her son had died, and previously her, her husband had died. It just seems like her world had just, just everything had collapsed. Family was frustrated, I'm sure. I'm sure everyone was just, 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 just grieving and bawling their, bawling their eyes out at the time. One, 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 one group, one, one, one crowd, they, they, kicked, they kicked cynicism and, and, and doubt out the door, and they, and they, they had a, an attitude of, of like, I, I can't wait to see what he does next. In the large group that was following the woman, there's a funeral going on. One crowd was full of faith. The other crowd was full of frustration. You ever feel frustrated in the way life ended up or where you are? They may have been thinking, I prayed for God to do something. Why didn't it happen the way that I wanted it to happen? They had all these questions. Their, their, their heads were down and they were frustrated. Then there's this procession of faith that was with Jesus. They'd seen all the miracles. They'd seen God do great things. They're living in such great expectation. So there's this procession of faith and a procession of frustration. And they're all about to collide. They're walking towards each other. Great things happen when faith collides with frustration. (laughs) You might be here today and you may not feel a sense of anticipation. You might feel frustrated. Somebody might have some tragedy might have happened in your family. You might be feeling just having health problems or maybe your marriage or maybe it's a job situation and you feel very frustrated like you're, these, these, these dreams, these situations, they just feel like dead places in your life. There's many reasons for frustration. But if the crowd only looked up and saw who was coming their way, if the crowd would have just looked up in the frustration line, and saw who was coming their way. It's Jesus, the miracle worker, Jesus, the one who changed your situation. It was Jesus who can turn things around. Wherever he shows up, miracles take place. Wherever he shows up, lives are changed. When he shows up, the dead are raised. See, there's there's power in perspective. There's power in and what we focus on, the Bible says, to keeping our eyes on Jesus, not our, not our circumstance, not our frustration, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We push aside cynicism. We push aside doubt. We surround ourselves with faith-filled people who are going in the same direction. And I believe some of us need to get out of the frustrated line and get into the faith-filled line. We need to get out of the the, the, the place of frustration in our life where things just don't seem to, maybe they're not working out. Maybe it's really hard right now. But that doesn't mean you can't step into faith. In the midst of the hardship, in the midst of the trial, you can still step in the line of faith. God responds to your faith, not your need. Once you get in that faith-filled line, you open, up your, you open up yourself and you position yourself for God to move powerfully in your life. God has never done great things through someone's doubt. God has never done great things through someone's negative thinking or negative words. God has never done great things by the confessing of a, a doctor's... <laughs> But a doctor said, God has never done great things by just having a negative mindset. 
God responds to faith. Can you say faith with me? Faith. faith. You with me today? Cynicism, doubt, and negativity, or even being a realist, never provoke God to do the miraculous in people's lives. Well, I'm a realist. I see things just the way that they are. No. Call things that aren't as though that they were. We walk by faith and not by sight. The situation might look, might, might look dark, it might look bleak, but by faith, I know God's going to turn things around. Things are going to change. I will not be stuck. I will not be, be, be held back by the limitations of this world. I will not be held back by, by the, my previous expectations of what I thought I was stuck in, but I, will be, but I will excel and I will increase because God is able to do it exceedingly, abundantly, above all I could ask or think. If he can think about it, he can do more through the power that works in you. We're not waiting for him to do it for us. We're saying, God, I'm partnering with you I'm doing it your way. And by your power and by your strength, it's going to happen. I know it because this is your will. You said it in your word, Lord. You've spoken it into my heart, and it lines up with your will. And I know, Lord, as I go forward, you're going to provide. You're going to open doors. You're going to give me favor, and you're going to help me do what you've called me to do. By the power that works in you. We're not waiting for him to do it for us. Amen. We are partners with God, the Bible says. We're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Think about that. <laughs> Chew on that for a while. We're not partial heirs. We don't have part of what he has, but we share everything. Joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And we've got to see ourselves like that. It's not arrogance, it's humility. It's putting ourselves in a, in a humble position that I'm going to submit, I'm going to put what God says over my feelings. I don't feel worthy. I don't feel like that's me. And it's very humbling to say, I'm going to submit to what God says over what they're saying or what I'm saying or what's going on in my mind or how I feel. Because sometimes that just doesn't make sense. Sometimes I just feel like I, I, don't, I just don't measure up. You're right, you don't. That's why he died for you. And because of that, you do measure up. Because of that, he has equipped you. Because of that, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Hallelujah. But if that crowd would have just looked and saw who was coming towards them, he knows where you are. And if he can find this little village called Nain, he can find you where you're at. Secondly, we've got to trust God's word no matter what. It says in, in verse 13, when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, do not weep. <laughs> that seems insensitive. <laughs> Here she just lost her husband and they're at the funeral of her, her son, Bawling her eyes out, and here comes Jesus. Hey, don't cry. If I were to do that at a funeral, I'm sure I'd probably get slapped. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. But Jesus was speaking a word into her life. You know, people say strange things at funerals, and that's, in, 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 and that's just the way that it goes. So this woman had just lost her son and her husband, and here comes Jesus, and he says, don't cry. And from the outside, it looks like a ridiculous remark. It seems like that just is, why was he saying these words? Don't cry. What do you mean? What he was trying to say is that I am bigger than all of your problems. I'm bigger than the situation that you're in right now. I have come to bring relief to your situation those dead things in your life, I'm about to breathe life into them. Don't cry. God's bigger. Don't cry because God, he's bigger than your marriage problems. He's saying, to, to don't, don't cry. I'm bigger than whatever you're experiencing in your body right now. 
I'm bigger than a doctor report. I'm bigger than a diagnosis. And the only reason the woman thought his words were so ridiculous is because she might not have recognized who he was. The words of Jesus are ridiculous until you understand who he is. <laughs> the words of Jesus seem ridiculous until you understand who he is. Verse 14, when he came and touched the coffin, and those who carried him stood still, and he said, young man, I say to you, arise. The reason why they stood still, because they were freaked out. <laughs> You don't touch dead bodies, especially in the Jewish religion. You become ceremonial unclean. They got freaked out. What is this guy doing? Get away from our funeral. I'll tell you what. Any funeral that Jesus showed up to, he ruined. (laughs) And every dead thing in your life, he'll also ruin that situation too, and he'll bring life to it. Any funeral that you may be experiencing in your life, he'll bring life. See, there's no situation that's too hopeless. I don't care who you are. When Jesus says, get up, things change. Thirdly, we got to tell people about what God is doing. When God does something in our life, it causes us to want to tell other people. We've got to be sure to do this. In verse 15, so he, was, so he who was dead sat up and began to speak, and he presented him to his mother. I wonder what he said. <laughs> what did the kid say <laughs> the first time he sat up and spoke? <laughs> like, what were your last words? Hey, everybody, watch this, you know, <laughs> one of those things. Did something crazy, maybe. I don't know. When you preach a funeral and a dead guy sits up, the funeral's over. <laughs> Just might as well dismiss all right, everybody down the fellowship hall. We got cookies. Be sure to eat them up because this funeral's over. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. 16 says, verse 16 says, Then fear came upon them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen up among us, and God has visited his people. Both the anticipation, the, 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 the faith filled crowd and the frustrated crowd all of a sudden were in a state of awe. I want people when they come to church, I want you, I want me, I want visitors, people who are new, to be in awe of what God is doing. I want people to be in awe of who God is. And that's going to require us telling people about what God is doing in our life, how he's changed us, how he's healed us, how he's delivered us, and getting our testimony and our witness out there into the world. And be in awe of God's power, be in awe of God's goodness, be in awe of his love. Where Christians say, I've never seen that before. I've never experienced God in this way. And where unbelievers and skeptics say, what do I need to be, do to be saved? That kind of awe. In verse 17, and this report about him went throughout all of Judea and all the surrounding region. See, they didn't come together to gather to talk about it. Talk about what God did. And remember what God did. They went out and told everybody. Have the worship team come up. We're going to close. They went out and told everybody. They went outside the the walls. They went outside to tell everybody what they saw. They they told people about all the goodness. They told people about all the miracles. They they told people about what they saw Jesus doing, that he still heals, he still saves, he still delivers, he still restores. And when God does something in our life, when God changes us, we need to tell other people about the goodness of God because it builds their faith. Faith rises up, and people are able to believe for their own miracles, believe God to do things in their lives. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Hebrews 13 eight, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Jesus, I th- Lord, Father, I thank you. I thank you that, Lord, you bring, you bring life to those dead situations in our life, Lord. 
I thank you, Lord, that as we, as Lord, as we, we follow you, we keep our eyes on you, Lord, things begin to change. We have a different perspective on life. And Lord, those today who are in the, in the, the, the line of the frustrated, we get in the line of the faith-filled, Lord. Those, those, the, the, the frustration, the hurt, the doubt, Lord, they'd make that conscious decision to say, you know what? I know that things are hard. I know things are difficult, but I'm choosing to believe God. I'm choosing to keep my eyes focused on Jesus. Maybe there's people here today you know, have a, don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's time to get in the faith-filled line. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ came to earth. God became man, and he dwelt among us. He lived a sinless and perfect life for the sole reason to die for you and to die for me to take our place on the cross, to take the punishment of our sins, to pay a price that you couldn't pay and pay a debt that you didn't owe, that he didn't owe. It says that he bore all of our sin and all of our shame on the cross. And maybe you're here today, you've never given your life to Christ you're here today, and you're ready to surrender to him. You're here today, and that weight of sin is too heavy. That weight of sin is too great. And you're reaching out to Jesus saying, Lord, save me. I accept the gift of eternal life. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes on him, trusts in him, not believe that he exists, but trusts and believes that what Jesus did on the cross pays for their sins. And maybe you're here today, you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want to give you an opportunity to make that commitment today. If you're here, you've never, you've never said, Jesus, forgive me my sins, come into my life. I want to live for you. If you've never prayed a prayer like that, I want you to give you an opportunity to pray like that today. And if that's you, real quick, I want you to raise your hand. Maybe you're here today and you're facing an impossibility. You're saying, God, today, by the raising of my hand, I'm signifying. I'm getting out of the frustration line into the faith line. I'm choosing, Lord. I've been frustrated for so long, but, Lord, I'm going to position myself for you to move in my life. I'm making the choice to believe you over my feelings, believe you over how it might look around me. Today, Lord, I'm choosing to get out of that frustration and choosing to get in faith. And if that's you, raise your hand. I want to pray for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's pray something more upbeat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for those who raised their hand, those who are, Lord, who are, who are wanting to, to get out of the frustration line, into the faith-filled line, Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that you're able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above we all we could ask or think, according to the power that, that, that works in us, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for the power, the strength, everything they need to accomplish what you have called them to do. And we thank you, Father, for your strength, for your power, for your word that is so true. We come against every sickness in every body in Jesus' name. We come against, Lord, strongholds and mindsets in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, I release faith into this congregation today in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen, amen, amen. amen.